Hey guys, this is Mike the Wrestling Godsmith, and you guys are watching on wrestling. Uh, this this video is actually my Dynamite, my AEW Dynamite uh, cha uh, fight night championship fight night review or champ fight night. And I gotta say, bro, the, the first match the eliminator for the AEW title was good because um, Kanosuke Takeshka was really good because I think like he showed that he he can go around with MJF. Um, he almost beat him. You know, he did the Blue Dragon Thunder Bomb. Like, the crap was into it. And I think every time I see MJF, and I'm like, bro, like, not to be mad. Like, MJF did, like, he did the, um, he did the Rolling Thunder Elbow and he countered it, um, to Kashka. Like, he was doing, like, he did the jumping. He did, like, three jumping knees, two dra Blue Dragon Thunder Bombs, and then he basically, um, tap he basically tapped out from the, um, Salt of the Earth and tapped out. And, of course, MJF took the, took his ring and beat the, made him bleed and beat the crap out of him. And Daniel, um, Brian Danielson came in and just, just, they, just, they were about to fight, but he left and he was getting ready for Rouge. And the crazy thing I do want to talk about, um, before I even get into the women's match is the fact that we literally get, we're still getting, we're still kind of going through, like, I guess you could say a heel run between Soraya and Tony Storm. I don't know. I don't know where, um... He carved she I don't know where she is at. I don't think she's really gonna join them. I don't know what they're trying to do with the story with that. Because it's like they're beating up on everyone, which is crazy. And I mean that match between her and Allie was good because um uh Jamie Hader and Allie because she she's changed a lot since I first seen her because it's like her her wrestling like her wrestling abilities like been like changing a lot and I've seen a little bit of her in the ring. Like her and Penelope before not bad, like they kind of they've kind of changed a little bit. But the thing that gets me is the fact that she she almost won. Like Ali almost won the, the match. The only thing is um Hater got it with the um with that pile driver and she just beat her. Cause Jamie Hater's kind of a like I feel like she she's gonna be like not Brit she's not gonna be at Britt Baker's level. Cause she's not gonna lose that belt. I think she probably might go against Soraya again. And maybe they'll do it at um Revolution if they get around to it. Cause I don't know what Tony Storm or Soraya are trying to do. Cause I felt bad for Leva Bates because she got like she got punched. They they just they just punched the crap out of her and then literally just punched her for no reason and then then out of nowhere and then just sprayed green paint on her and called her a loser and I was like, bro, that's kind of messed up. Because the thing is, I'm still trying to figure what they're doing with her, but you know she's not gonna quit either. I think she's gonna stick with them too. Cause I think like. Willow Nightingale, I've seen a lot about her, and she's doing great. And and so and and, and Jade Cargill, I think she's gonna find an opponent at Revolution because I feel like the one person that could go against her would be Tony because Tony's actually won a couple of matches. She could be TV. She could could be TBS Championship and just win. Cause her and like I guess her and Ruby are in a rivalry now. But I don't know what they're trying to do. I don't know if they're trying to do like a. A AEW like new generation thing versus the originals, but I don't know. And like I gotta say, like um the top fight against the, the trios, the top fight um top fight AR Fox trios match with um the the elite was crazy because you know what? Every time I see Dante Martin and his brother, like bro, th these dudes are just like coming up with new things. Like the fact that he did like the AR Fox did like two cutters in one match and actually. Got it off and then did um the nose dive and actually got it off and almost won, is crazy to me, and like that match I think was fantastic. I'm gonna give that match like a solid eight out of ten because like the story they're not done with them, because the fact that these dudes are actually these dudes have gone another level like ever since because you know what Top Flight has been those that team that actually can show what they do just like the Young Bucks can do just like. Just like um the acclaim can do, and that's the thing. Like you gave the they they gave the acclaim a ladder. They gave him a they gave him a shot, and they took it. And uh, speaking of the acclaim against the guns, like it was a great match. I just didn't like the finish to it because, in my own words, I'm actually gonna call it a crap. I'm actually gonna call it a bull crap finish because it was crap. The fact that they hit him with the belt, and they still won with the ref, and the ref was counting mad slow. That should have been that match should have been restarted. I don't give I don't give a crap about that because if they get them at if they get them at Revolution, it better be no holds barred. Because the fact of the matter or elimination, because the fact of the matter, those dudes don't deserve those belts. The guns have not proven to anybody they can beat anybody. Them dudes have only been three and zero because of the fact I'm like, bro, you're only two and zero. And the fact of the matter is that they're not even become they're not even a serious tag team. They weren't even when their dad was with them. That was the sad part about it though. 
They could have been a trio. They could have been something. But no, what happened? The claim showed a little bit more um, potential than they did. And that's the problem. Now they're trying to go in the story with, 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 with daddy ass saying, oh, oh, dad, you left us. Oh, you left us on the career. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. You didn't do this. I'm like, bro. The fact of the man, you're not even good. You guys don't even have good title. Like, they didn't even win. They had no special. He literally was going to win by the most cheating finish, that the, the most cheating, the most cheating trope of wrestling of all time by hitting the person with the belt and winning. And the sad part is, like they claim actually they're actually a rogue funded tag team because these brothers can actually go. So getting the elite, they're they're so low on the totem pole in AEW, it's sad. And they're with the firm, because the firm can't win a matchup they even tried. And speaking of the firm, so we have a way he's still talking crap about Hook. He's been beating all your jokers. Like, bro, you had Big Bill Morrissey that couldn't even lay a hand on Hook. You had freaking Ethan Page and Matt Hardy win against them. And Isaiah can literally, Isaiah's not even doing nothing. Because without Mark Quinn, he's just a dude. And I'm like, bro, I'm sorry, but I really don't see the firm actually coming to get those both. We don't even know what the pur the purpose of the firm is. And they're just another faction that we don't get. And then the thing that the real bullshit and the thing that I don't like with the fact that freaking like he um Brooke, he starts be cool um cool hand daddy magic and 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 Mark and and Myers and I'm like bro he beat those jokers those bronies like they were nothing and the sad part is and I'm I'm actually gonna say it like. Those dudes are not... The JAS is not even a serious faction because them brothers don't have all the titles. You literally got a bunch of jokers following Jericho around and then Jericho, with a, with a mystery mask guy, comes out and hits him with a juice effect and he wins. And Daniel Garcia isn't the pro champion anymore. He was better when his brother was trying to leave the JAS and then he's with them because he wants to be a, a pro a, a sports entertainer and a pro wrestler. And I'm like, bro, go to WWE. Go over there. Cause honestly, it's a joke. Those two, those things, those factions are a joke. The firm doesn't even matter. And I'm being honest, like it was a really good AEW episode because I liked the MJF thing with the promo. But even with MJF, and I'm gonna talk about the promo too, because his promo didn't make no sense. That he he could take any road, he all take anything to win. And I'm like, bro, he's been paying the he's been paying the wrong dudes. You paid Rush to beat Dan Brian Danielson. He couldn't beat him. You paid Timothy Thatcher. He couldn't beat him. And he's the freaking mass ranking strong style submissions. You couldn't beat him. And he's the one of the best technical wrestlers in wrestling. And his brother took him from Noah in New Japan. I'm like, how do you beat him? You couldn't beat him. He knows every hold. That's the funny thing about Tim Thatcher. And if Tim Thatcher would have actually been on... if. Tim Thatcher would have been on, and that's the one thing I said, if he would have been on main roster at the time, the way before, they, because they caught him on NXT against with Maverick when they fought each other in the pit and they, and they won. And the problem is Tim Thatcher don't think that he can't win. Tim Thatcher's like the most dangerous dude. And the funny thing is I like the guy. And it's sad because I'm like, bro, I don't understand MJF paying people week after week after week for no reason. MJ, and the thing is, I wanted to talk about the hangman situation with Mox. The hangman situation with Mox is stupid because hangman thinks he's going to beat Mox straight up. You're not going to beat him three, three, um, three sets to one. You're not going to beat him. You can't beat Mox. Bro, you thought you could knock him out with the with the buck shot and you still couldn't beat him. Everything he knows how to beat you, everything he knows how to counter you for. The problem is, I'm like, bro, you got the Blackpool Combat Club going after everybody and he's put they're putting them on notice, which I like. Cause boy, you just putting them on notice. Claudio Castanoli is putting them on notice. Because I'm thinking to myself, if anybody does win that title in the next year or even in 2024, it's going to be Daniel Bryan's year. He's going to be the most dominant champion. And if they and, and somehow, and I and I said this before, and I same thing with Samoa Joe and the Warlow um rivalry. Those two, he's gonna Warlow's gonna be the most dominant dude in friggin' AEW. 
He don't even got to... If he does a heel turn, the people are going to love him. Because we love him because the dude literally can beat the crap out of anybody. He beat freaking Hook. I mean, he beat Hobbs. He's beating them all. He's beating the best of the best. And Samoa Joe thinks for some weird reason he's going to be the most dominant dude. You're the only you're the only Ring of Honor television champion. That's the difference, because you're not defending that belt. And I'm like, bro, the only reason you defend that belt on Ring of Honor because nobody will go against you. You beat Jay Lethal, which is the only T V champion. You have to be Willie Yuta, you never beat him. You don't even wanna you don't even wanna go against dudes who actually could go put up a fight against you. And Darby, I love the guy. I think it's going to be his time for him to be in the championship. Because Stane's going to be like, yo, if you got the title, if you already beat the TV, you could be World Heavyweight Champion. That was the whole thing with Jungle Boy was supposed to be. He was supposed to be the guy that made history for for Kenny. Because the joke is if he would have been... Because if, if Christian would have beat... If Christian would have beat Kenny for the AEW title, Christian could have changed his whole... He beat him for the Impact title, but he never really completed the, the legacy that he said he was going to complete. And that was the problem. He wanted to work with Jungle Jungle um Jungle Express, which I don't mind. But the problem is you had you literally had Luchasaurus doing nothing and he turned him into a heel, which I'm pretty sure he's not even doing anything because he's probably hurt and he's probably been in surgery for so long, same thing with Christian Cage, but that's the problem. And the thing is that now and I'm thinking about it, like I said, but all in all, guys, this this is my thought on AEW is like that that the title, the tag team title match was it was just dumb. The finish was the, the match was good, but that finish just took the air out of everybody's lungs, bro. The crowd loved the acclaim. And the fact is we get a swerve in a title match. I could see that happening maybe in AEW, because maybe like with Dan like Brian Danielson with the with the um with the Iron Man match. But Maybe, but the problem is they keep trying to get these dudes. And the thing is, I'm like, yo, mogul affiliates don't know what they're doing because of Parker Bordeaux. They still don't know what they're doing with them because they ain't doing nothing. Because every time I see them, they're not doing nothing. I'm sorry, because I'm not making this a rant video. But this is what my thoughts of all of AEW for this episode and for the last two episodes have been. It's literally just been like, bro, the Acclaim are the one tag team that can beat everyone. They can beat them all. They can beat FCR. That's the funny thing about FCR. FCR could just take their belts right now. They're not going to want to do it. They're going to want to do it at some point. They're probably sitting there relaxing because they they defended every belt. They've defended every belt. They had the Ring of Honor tag team belt. They had the, 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 IGP, double, the IGP championship belts. That they beat them. They beat the freaking leg the leg the, um, the Empire, the United Empire for. And they beat them. You see, I would want I would want to see Miro at some point probably come back and want to beat Joe because I feel like Miro never really got the fight against Samoa Joe, and I really want to see if he can actually beat Samoa Joe in a fight because we never got to see that in WWE. We could see it in AEW or Ring of Honor at some point. But anyway, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Peace.